Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, you can already tell what time it is, but I am super excited to be getting my Smart Art Boxes again. I did cancel my subscription for a couple of months um, just to save some money, but I'm able to afford them again, so I am super happy. So let's just get right into it. Now, this is the April 2020 no april 2022 box so i will leave all of the information down below because i'm sure you guys have heard so many times you know about this box but if not make sure to check the description because i'll have all of the prices and everything down there for you but basically this is a monthly subscription box you get cool fun art supplies to try it's always well worth it and they also give you some lessons and everything in this little booklet so it gives you a little history about the products that we're going to receive. It tells us all the products, including the prices. And they've also started including the featured candy, which I love. So that's kind of cool. And then they give you a little blurb about how to use your supplies. And then they've always got some prompts on the back. So the prompts for this month is 1990s Circus Candy and Baked. Ooh. So I'm going to put this off to the side right now and just dig in and see what we got this month. So the first thing here are these Kuretake Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And we get a set of six. It looks like a red, a yellowish orange, a darker green, a blue, a purple, like a purpley pink color, and a black. So that's cool. And these are watercolor brushes from what I'm seeing here. And these retail for $20.88, so that's quite a bit for six pens here. But it looks like you're able to do some calligraphy type writing. I am not a calligrapher at all. I do not do any fancy type of writing. But that's kind of cool. And they look like they have pretty fine tips to it. Let me get it out and see what one looks like here. So that's what that looks like. And we'll get in and test all of the supplies out as we go too, but I like to just take a look at everything and sort of see what everything comes in the box. So that's the first thing there. Then I see this Mary's 4B eraser, and this is a super soft springy eraser, and it is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but like I'm hardly pressing on it at all, but that super squishes, really. Um, so this eraser retails for $2.30 and it says that this eraser fits to any size hand and allows the artist to remove charcoal, graphite, and other artists lead more completely than other erasers in the market. So that's kind of cool. So it's supposed to erase even better. I wonder if it leaves like chunks behind or not. So we'll have to give that a try. Then I see this three piece water brush. Now I do love water brushes, especially when I'm using watercolor pencils. But I've never tried any like this where it's got the bigger belly on it. Now these three water brushes retail for $8.99. And it says that they have a durable nylon tip and it holds its point for better stroke control. So I wonder if these are the same. Okay, well there's the tips. Oh, that's really nice actually. Pretty nice tip. It's pretty long too, so you would be able to get like some finer lines if you wanted to. And then I'm wondering how this, if this just unscrews. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you just fill that up under your tap or you could use a little pipette to put some water in there and then screw it back on. So that's kind of neat that we get three and I'm assuming they're all different sizes. Oh, this one looks like, that's weird. I don't know if this one's been used or not, but it's got like some water residue in there this one does as well just a tiny little bit could be just condensation from shipping um you know because i'm up here in canada so it could be from it going from warm to cold warm to cold and just getting some condensation now i feel like these screw on the opposite way from my other ones because i'm having a really hard time like screwing and unscrewing this that's what the other one looks like so I just want to see, so these are my brushes and they unscrew towards me. Okay, so I screw them on that way and I unscrew them this way. 
And these ones are the opposite way. I unscrew them this way and they screw on towards me. So that's why I'm struggling with these so much because these ones are the opposite way and this one I have to turn it that way. Not a huge difference, but I am gonna struggle with that a lot because I'm so used to using these ones. So the next thing that I see here are these artist grade sketching pencils and this is a set of 12 this retails for $7.99 now you guys know I'm not a huge graphite fan but I've been getting them so much I feel like I should start trying to use them so we've got a 6h a 4h a 2h hb a b a 2b 3b 4b 5b 6b 8b and 10b so you get quite a bit of variety actually this is one of the sketching sets that I think has sent so much more pencils than normally. I feel like you just usually get a few. So it comes in this plastic sleeve tray and they are already sharpened. Let's just grab one here. And this is the 5B, so it's got the name, sketching pencil, and that on it. That's pretty much it. It's a nice pencil. And I like that it does have these same little sections on it like the Albert Durr so if you lay it down it's not going to roll around on you so you could have a few on your desk on the go but I'll have to give those a try and just see how they feel now if you guys have any tips because I have no idea I know some of them are hard lead some of them are soft lead but other than that I don't know why you would use more than one pencil so I don't know if like some are darker than others but just by looking at the tips here, they sort of look all the same. So I really don't get the difference between graphite pencils. But again, I'm not a graphite artist. So if you guys have any suggestions for me on how to become a better graphite artist, then certainly let me know down in the comments below. Now, this is our paper for the month, and this is a huge paper pad. So this is the Fabriano watercolor paper pad, and it's in an 8x10. I actually really like the square layout of this. That looks pretty cool and I don't have any square um, pads like this and it says that this is a cold press finish super color retention intensity outstanding lifting and scrubbing abilities it's acid free and it is 140 pounds 300 GSM you get 30 sheets now I'm pretty sure we got paper like this from a smart art box maybe a few months ago and if it is the same paper, I actually really liked that paper. So let me go look. Yeah, so this is the one that we received from Smart Art a while ago. And this is the exact same paper, but it's in a spiral bound. And oh, this was actually the September 2021 Smart Art box. So we got some watercolors. And then I think these were like some sparkly inks that we got in this one. And okay, I did these artworks here. And then I think I did another one. Yes, I did this colorful one as well. We had gotten some brush markers that month. That's what some of those were. And some watercolors, which was pretty cool. And then these were the little sparkly ink things around. And this paper held up really well. Like This is super thick. Um, for the amount of water and stuff that I used with these illustrations, it did a really good job. I was impressed. Like, it didn't even buckle. So I am super excited to have more of this paper. And clearly, I need to use this more because I, I, I remember enjoying that other paper pad. So I am really excited about this. And it looks like, oh, my first page is dirty. Lovely. That's all right. We'll use that as the swatching page. Um, but I've, I've really enjoyed this paper. It is textured, but not quite as much as if you were using like arches or even the Academy watercolor paper. This is still a little bit smooth, but it, it held up pretty well. I don't think this is sized though, because I remember a lot of the water kind of sitting on top. So it was better if you were doing, um, wet on dry techniques. And then I see this Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser, and I'm actually really excited to get one of these. These are one of my favorite um, erasers for colored pencils. They work really well. The tip is a lot hardened. It's almost like, like it's sanded a little bit, so you do want to be careful depending what paper you're using this on, because if you're pushing really hard, um, it can rip the paper. But if you're going gently, this actually does a really good job to lift colored pencil if you've gone out of your line art or anything like that. So these are always handy to have, and it's hard enough that you can sharpen it up to a finer point as well, so that's pretty cool. Then I see this Karataki Zig Cartoonist Flexible Pen. This retails for $2, and it says that it has a flexible point tip that produces thin and thick lines. 
So let's get this open. Oh, I thought it was going to be a lot longer than that, but that's all right. And this retails for $2.60. And it does say it's water-based pigment here. So I wonder if this could be blended out with water as well. We'll try that out. And then the last thing I have in here, last but not least, is our um, little sweet for the month. So they always send a little candy. And this says it's the amazing Smarties flavor you know and love in a new shape. With traditional Smarties candy sized up to lollipop, you can crunch on these classic candies while you plan your next masterpiece. So that's kind of cool. I always love that they give some kind of little treat. Some people don't like that, but I kind of do. It's fun and it adds something to the box. Oh, and then the sticker. I almost forgot the sticker for the month. So they always send a little sticker and it says smart art and it's got lots of little color right up my alley. I love that. So those are all the products that we got this month. So I'm going to get them all out, play around with them, and uh, we'll kind of see where this goes. I don't know if I'm going to do a full piece of artwork this month with this box or if I'm just going to play around with them. I'll kind of see what I feel like once I start playing with them. Okay, well, I did a great job at filming this. I had done this all in real time, playing with all of the supplies, and apparently I wasn't filming it at all. <laughs> So these are the Zig markers here. They blend out really great and I did put little patches here and let them dry completely for a few minutes and those still blended out pretty nicely as well. This was the um, Zig marker here. So once you give it a few seconds to dry it does not blend out but when you first put it down it does blend out. This eraser works good here and then I was showing the Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser over some colored pencil here. I'll just do another little bit here because I was saying this was one of my favorite ones to use with colored pencils and you can see how it just like almost lifts it completely to white but since you guys completely missed all of this um, I might just go ahead and do an artwork so I'm going to go find something I think I want to find something like 90s related um, because I was a 90s kid growing up. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. For the artwork today, I decided to go with the 90s theme and I decided to do this little Game Boy illustration here. Now, I remember the first time I got a Game Boy growing up in the 90s and I think the very first game I got with it was one of the Pokemon games and I just absolutely loved it. And I would remember laying on the couch there, watching my little shows, playing my game and it was just so fun and I think this started my journey into gaming. Now if you guys don't know I'm a pretty big gamer. I do play a few online games and I play some console games. I wouldn't say I'm a huge gamer but definitely in my spare time I love to game. Now let's talk about the supplies that we got this month. So those Zig Clean Color Real Brushes. They worked pretty good but I wish they would have blended out just a little bit better even when you put them down right on the paper and went in to go blend them out, they didn't completely blend out, which, I mean, it depends what you're doing it for. If you're going to be using them for more calligraphy type stuff, then that's totally fine. But the way I was using them was trying to use them more water-based and trying to blend them out. Although looking at the artwork now, the texture in there doesn't look that bad. However, I wish they would have blended out just a little bit more. I actually really did like that Zig flexible black pen that came in the box this month. Now, as you're going to see when I start outlining the artwork, I make a mistake. And so one side of it's got a little thicker of a black line. But I feel like the nib on it was just big enough that I could still get some finer points. Or if I pushed a little bit more, I could get thicker lines. I find sometimes when the nib's a little too long. It's harder to control your brush marks and the sketching pencils worked just like any graphite pencils would. Now I'm not a huge graphite lover so I can't really give you an in-depth opinion on them but they worked just fine for me. Now I think the highlight of the box for me is the Fabriano watercolor paper. I really enjoy this paper and I completely forgot about the other Fabriano paper that we had received in a previous box. I think it was the September 2021 box, but I remember really enjoying that paper then as well. So I really need to use this paper more. It's definitely better than the Canton XL. And I'm not really sure what the difference in quality is because this one isn't 100% cotton either, but I'm wondering if this paper is sized a little bit more, but it just performs a whole lot better than the Canton one does. Now, I love getting my mystery art boxes 
but I'm not always going to use the supplies afterwards at the end of the month. So I've been trying to think of ways that I can give back to you guys. And usually I'll save the supplies up for a giveaway or something. But let me know if anyone would be interested in paying for shipping. And then I would send you whatever's left in the box after I've done the video and tried the supplies and stuff. Then I could send it off to you. I just can't afford to pay for shipping every month. But if you guys are interested in something like that, or if you have any suggestions of how I could, you know, use the supplies or give back to you guys somehow, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.